Hi, so in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to insert and format an image. Once you've inserted the image I'm going to show you how to crop your image, resize it, add a border or a shadow, a reflection, soft edges, 3D effects and some global adjustments. So let's get started. So if we want to insert an image into our PowerPoint slide, then we need to ensure that we've got the right element in our slide. So at the moment you can see I have this box here with these icons in the centre of it, which means that in here I can insert anything from a table, to an image, to a video, to a chart, online pictures and smart art. So to make sure that you've got the right box, if you just go up to the Home tab and go along to this Layout icon, click on the Layout so you can see you've got a number of Layout options. And in certain options, you'll have these slides here which allow you to insert those different elements. So I've just clicked on this one here, Title and Content. Then all I need to do is to go up to the Insert tab and along to this icon here that says Pictures. Click on the drop-down and then I'm going to select a picture from file. Then I'm going to select a simple picture and then click insert. Once you've inserted your image you can then go ahead and resize and crop it. The easiest way to resize it is to go to the corner here, click and then just simply drag down or up to resize your image. Occasionally your image is actually the wrong crop, so perhaps you just want this to be a square crop. So for example, if you wanted to have some writing or text on the left or right, you may only want this image to take up a smaller proportion of your slide. So there are a couple of ways to do that. If you click on your picture, this tab up here will appear called Picture Format. If you click on that, you're given another ribbon with a range of different options. And in those options, is this icon here that says crop. If you click on the drop down and select crop then you can see that the outline of your image has changed slightly with these black marks in all corners and sides of your image and all you simply need to do is click on one of them and drag the line into where you want to crop your image. So if I want to skip square crop and I'll just simply drag it until the height matches the width. You can see the numbers changing and if I find that I've actually cropped too much of the dog then I can just simply go to the other side and just crop it until I'm happy. So there we have a square crop and all you need to do then is press enter or just click on the crop tool there and then you have your cropped image. The other way to crop your image is to double click. This drop down menu will appear on the right hand side. If you go up to the image icon here, you'll see that you have this option at the bottom here called crop. If I just click on that, we have the option of picture position and crop position. Now with our crop here, we can adjust the width, height, left and top. If I want to adjust the width of my image, I'll go to the width option here. If I click to reduce it, I click on the down arrow here, you can see that the width of my image is adjusting. I can also adjust the height. If I want to reduce the height of my image. And if your image isn't necessarily in the place you want it to be, you want to move the dog left or right, then what you can do is just simply move your crop to the right. And again, you can move the image up or down to get the section that you want on show in the right place. Now, if you decide that you want to keep the crop ratio of your image, but actually you want to make this dog a little bit bigger, you can go to picture position here. And what you can do is you can increase the size of your image. You can increase the width by stretching it out. 
And obviously things can start to get a little bit funky if you start to stretch out, particularly people's faces. So you can compensate that with the height by clicking the up arrow and increasing the height of your image. And as you can see, the dog's being stretched up a little bit to, uh, to make him look a little bit more normal. And then if you want to move this image left or right, if you click up, the image will move to the right. And if you click down, the image will move to the left. And again, up and down again, you can use the offset Y and you can just move that image around. So you can get your image to the perfect position and in the perfect ratio and crop just by using these tools here. If you'd like to put a border and a shadow around your image, then just go ahead again and double click on your image. Wait for the drop down to appear and then click on the bucket arrow here. Here you'll be presented with fill and line. Fill refers to the inside of your image and line refers to the border. So if we just click on line and we click solid line, you see again we've got a number of options. Let's say for example I want to put a thick black border around my image. We just move this in a second. If you click on this icon here and you see there's a drop down, ensure that black is selected but of course if you don't want black you have a range of colours here and if you click on more colours then the colour wheel will appear and then you can just simply drag this little cursor around and select the colour of your choice. So I'm just going to select black and then I'm going to go down to width and here you can input the thickness of your choice by just simply putting a value in or you can just click on the arrows and increase the size. Now as you can see as I click upwards the border around my image is getting thicker. If I just scroll in, you can see the border is getting wider here. Now you can just play around with this until it suits you. You can also use this sketch star here to make the border look like it's hand drawn. You can go to the extreme, which is this one here, which will make your image border look quite bumpy. Or you can just go to a simple one here, which will just mean that it's just not perfectly straight. In addition, you've got these options here, which means you can have several lines for your border and you can also have a dotted line. If you'd like a shadow around your image, then again, you double click, go up to Format Picture and then make sure you're on this icon here and then you can go down to Shadow. Here you're given a number of options and just running through these, we've got Presets, which means if you click on the drop down, you have these options here. So these are the ones where the shadow is on the outside of the image and these are the options where you've got shadow on the inside. So if I just select this option here and I just increase the size slightly so you can see there's now a shadow around my image. Now you can actually do quite a lot with this shadow. You can increase or decrease the transparency of it so if you just want something that's very light and you can also increase the size and the blur and in a lot of cases people will actually use quite a blurry shadow to just give it that element that it's just lifted off the page and then just reduce the transparency down and then you can see that I've just got a nice shadow behind my image that makes it look like it's just been lifted from the page. You can also change the angle of it so let's just take the blur off so that I can show you this. You just change the angle of your shadow slightly and the distance away from your image that shadow will be. If you'd like to put a reflection on your image, then again, if we make sure that we've double clicked on our image to bring up the drop down on the right hand side, we are again on this icon here. We're going to go to Reflection. Again, we'll just have a quick look at the presets and we'll just decide on this preset here. And what that will do is that we'll create a reflection for your image to make your image look like it's standing on a piece of glass or reflective material. Once you've got your reflection, you can make all the adjustments here with the transparency 
we make it more or less transparent. And you can also change the size where more or less of that reflection appears. And obviously the blur. So you can blur that reflection more or less if you wish. And then of course the distance that reflection will be from your image. So if we put it here, what it does, it actually makes the image look like it's floating above its reflection. We can all do, also do some 3D rotation of this image. And again, we've highlighted the image for the drop down to the right. And again, we're on this icon here. If we go down to 3D rotation and we click on the presets. We can make our picture look like it's more 3D and it's turning and facing different directions. So if I just click on a few of these, you'll get the general idea of how your image can look. Now, this does look far more effective if we pop a 3D format on it. So let's say, for example, we've done a slight bevel on this section here. 3D format, then we go down to artistic format, so we go down to 3D rotation and then we click. You can see now that our image looks a little bit like a canvas and that it has beveled edges. So as we move that image around you can see that there's a little bit of a border around the outside and it's not just a flat image as you can see here as I zoom in there's a bevel edge there and once you click off that image again you can move that round your uh, slide as you see fit. If you want your image to blend in a little bit more with your slide you can use soft edges so again click on soft edges a number of presets will appear if we just select this one here and you can see that my image has now got a very soft edge. And we can adjust that using this slider here. And if we click off, you can see how your image will look in your slide. You can also make adjustments to your image by going up to the ribbon here. And in this section here, you can see that I can use the corrections drop down here. And these corrections can lighten or darken your image and use less or more contrast. So if I just go to the extreme and click on this one, then you can see it's increased the contrast and brightness of my image. In addition, if I wanted to slightly change the colour of my image, I can either cool it down by going to the left here, which is more blue, or I can go to the right here, which warms my image up by increasing the yellow. So if I just click on this warm one, and you can see it's slightly warmer than it was before. I could also go to artistic effects, click on the drop down. And here again, you're given a number of options, some quite funky. So do go ahead and have a play and see if there's anything that you like. And finally, the transparency option here, you just click on here. Then if you don't want your picture to be the main focus of your slide, then you can reduce its transparency by just using that icon there. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.